ওকে তাহলে আমরা শুরু করি সেখান থেকে যেখানে আমরা আগের দিন এন্ড করেছিলাম রেদার উই উড বি ডুইং আ বিট অফ রিক্যাপ সো উই নো উই হোয়াট উই হ্যাভ আইডেন্টিফাইড দ্যাট আ গিভেন প্রবলেম অফ ফাইন্ডিং আ ফাংশন can be posed in three ways namely the strong form which basically means governing governing differential equation or a set of equations this could be ode's or pd's acha by the way if it is ode i'm not quite sure if that there should be an s after that so uh, governing differential equation plus boundary condition that's what is strong form and we have learned that uh, there are weak forms and what are the weak forms uh so there is a uh, one the so called minimization statement or potential energy statement or m statement and then there is a variational statement or the so called v statement and uh, if we want to give uh, examples of the same so this is what uh, the strong form looks like with uh, with uh, your 1d bar problem with distributed load distributed axial load this is what the strong form looks like e a u prime and then you do this whole thing prime plus q of x q being the distributed load equals 0 which is a second order uh, ordinary differential equation ordinary differential equation as in there is only one independent variable which is x and comes with boundary conditions for example gamma u is x equal 0 where the condition is uh, u0 is 0 and gamma t the traction boundary condition is actually at x equal l which says uh, e a u prime this whole thing evaluated at l equals p these are the boundary conditions so this is what this all of this together is a so called strong form and uh, we have shown the weak forms for the same equation we did quite a bit of discussion on different forms so the variational form for the same would look something like 0 to l e a u prime v prime dx equals equals 0 to l q of x v dx and then p times v of l okay now we went back and forth to show that acha uh, this this two are going to be equivalent that you can go from one to other and from the other to uh the so one to other and vice versa by the way whenever you are doing this you need to mention that this is true for all v okay and uh, and uh, barring uh barring v satisfied the essential boundary condition 
which is uh, that is v at x equals 0 is 0. That is the condition. Okay. So these two are basically same. Now, <clears throat> why we must satisfy the essential boundary condition? We discussed in length in previous classes that uh, that the variation. Uh, so typically, u plus epsilon v, where epsilon is just a real number, is the typical admissible function for a solution to some minimization problem which we are not we have not discussed yet today but uh, mm, so these are the admissible functions and because the admissible function must satisfy the essential boundary condition therefore the variation must be zero at wherever the value of u is given wherever directly boundary condition is given. Okay, so uh, with uh, the arbitrariness of, uh, um, arbitrary nature of V, we had established that these two forms, the strong form and the variational form are exactly equivalent of one another. And you can basically pose the problem in either way. Okay, and you can solve the problem uh, uh, in e either form or, and you are going to get the same answer. But there is a catch. There is a catch. Uh, the thing is, when you are looking for an exact solution, that is the case. But if you are looking for an approximate solution, then um, then your strong form requires the function should be such that which could be taken derivative twice or in so-called L2 continuous. Whereas this one requires your function to be L1 continuous. Okay. And when you are solving numerically, when you are trying to get an approximate solution and we are, you are willing to allow for some error for the sake of simplicity, of course, one dimensional bar is no complicated problem. But again, we are simply benchmarking a method which is, gen, which is generally applicable to uh, simple and complicated problems. And the only way we can uh, evaluate the effect, effectiveness of a given numerical method is by comparing to known solutions. And how do we get known solutions? By, by solving simple problems in a closed form way. So for a second order linear ordinary differential equation, there is, it is not a problem to get the uh, closed form solution. For example, if Q is any form of polynomial, any form of polynomial, I don't care which order, you can very easily integrate this equation twice and get your solution. Even if Q is some sort of sinusoidal or exponential function, it is doable. Logarithmic possibly also doable. If it is a complicated function, which probably involves logarithm of sine, sine, uh, sine term or something else, then it is probably difficult. Then it is probably uh, not suitable for closed form integration uh, or closed form solution. But that's where the numerical method comes, that it is applicable to nonlinear equations. It is applicable to uh arbitrary arbitrary loading function here qx is kind of the load loading function um so that way it would be generic i said by the way um, so we have established the relationship between the variational form and the strong form variational form is one of the weak forms so that they are equivalent okay it's not you lose uh uh, you know, the, the this term could be misleading. The strong and weak terms could be misleading. But you don't lose any information while going from one to other. Okay. That's why they are equivalent. And we have uh, done both the exercises going from strong form to the uh, differential equation. Of course, that method for going from, uh, sorry, going from uh, variational statement to your uh, differential equation, we have done that. So, uh, so the thing is uh, that, that thing is called uh, while going from variational to strong form. That thing is your uh, Euler-Lagrange equation. Okay, uh, and of course we have also shown how to get the variational form from the uh, strong form. Now we have also discussed that the uh, aim statement. If this is the this is the V statement, which basically says that uh, basically says that. Uh, 
this integral for any arbitrary v equates to this whatever is in the right side okay so you must be such that u is such a function which satisfies this condition for any arbitrary v this should be true that's what this statement means so you are still looking for a function u but the problem is posed in a uh, with, uh, uh, in a in a in a weak form where a uh, couple of different integrals are involved and you are saying that this integration in the left equates to whatever is in the right for any arbitrary variation v satisfying the essential boundary condition okay uh, one more thing v is zero in gamma u not because u is zero in gamma u v is zero in gamma u it's because u is known in gamma u value of u is known in gamma u acha having said that we have also established that the equivalent aim statement is something like this equivalent aim statement is uh, minimize with respect to u and u prime the following potential which is uh, which is 0 to l half 0 to l e a u prime whole squared dx minus 0 to l q of x u of x dx plus sorry minus p times u of l okay so uh, we established that so actually uh, in the last class we solved the 1d bar problem uh, one using your uh, hamiltonian method or the hamiltonian approach and then we also used newtonian approach so newtonian approach uses uh, this the so called free body diagram and uh, equations of equilibrium where hamiltonian approach is all about minimizing action which is essentially a definite integral of of uh, of some form of energy loosely speaking some form of energy uh, because the lagrangian itself is essentially kinetic energy minus the potential energy uh, so so essentially this is hamiltonian approach going from the potential energy but eventually we arrive at the differential equation and uh, the relational form uh, so it actually comes in between it so there is m statement then v statement then the strong form so uh, in a way we have also shown that we can go from m statement to the so called v statement so this one is the v statement and this one is the m statement in a way uh, with examples we have shown that we can go from m statement to v statement now let's write the general form for the m statement and this is how it goes so minimize with respect to u now this u could be anything in bar problem it was elongation of the bar at any any x but here it could be anything and uh, minimize pi which looks like half a u u minus l of u where a u u is a symmetric bilinear operator if you are in doubt i'm essentially talking about this term right here okay this term is uh, so if i if i uh, so if i write down the corresponding v statement so the corresponding v statement is a u v equals uh, l of v for all v v equals 0 
in gamma u. Now, what does each of these statements say? So it essentially says that you are still looking for a function u. In M statement, you are looking for a function u that minimizes this pi, which has the above expression. And in V statement, you are saying that u is such that for any arbitrary variation v, this equation holds. Okay. And key to this argument is the arbitrariness of v, which essentially establishes the equivalence of the these two of these two statements. Okay. Now this a u v is nothing but integration e a u prime v prime in relation to bar problem. Okay. And now we would do a generic proof that the aim statement and v statement are equivalent of one another. That means if you have one, you can get the other one. We have already established if you have the variational form, you can use the Euler Lagra equation to get to the strong form. And we have also shown that if you have the strong form, you can get the variational form uh, the way we did in the last class. Okay, so you need to go back to uh, that uh, that derivation, how we got the variational form from the strong form. Now, let's say I want to argue that the aim statement and the V statement are uh, are equivalent of one another. Uh, let's first argue, say, aim statement holds which basically means which basically means if I define some sort of pi tilde which would be half of a u plus v or rather epsilon v u plus epsilon v minus a of u plus epsilon v. So this must be greater than or equal to pi if the aim statement holds. So now we can write Achha. what do I mean by symmetric bilinear form? Uh, you see. In any of these examples, if you take a of u comma v plus w, that would simply be a of u v plus a of u w. Also, you have a of u v equals a of v u. That's what the symmetric part uh, takes over. This one is the linear part and it is bilinear, which also means that if I tried uh, u plus w v, that would be a u v plus a w v, w v. Okay. So all of these are arguments for, uh, for the symmetric bilinear form.
okay so if i if i write this equation down so it would be u u minus l of u plus 1 by 2 times twice epsilon a u v so it would be a epsilon v u and a u epsilon v epsilon of course is a scaling factor so what i'm trying to argue here is let's say if it is alpha u v uh, then it is also alpha times a u v that's what linear means and then you have epsilon squared So one more thing, sorry, here you do not need, you do not need the epsilon, here you do not need the epsilon. So u plus v u do I, do you need epsilon here? No, you do need epsilon here, epsilon. Plus epsilon squared, epsilon squared A, V, V, and then minus L, uh, epsilon L, V is greater than equals pi. Now, This is true for any arbitrary V because if a u u minus l u is the minimum value. So no matter what V do I take and what epsilon do I take, okay, this should be true that this should be greater than pi. Now of which, of which this part is uh, simply pi. Okay, now if I take partial derivative of pi with respect to epsilon, because uh, u minimizes pi tilde to pi, so that must go to zero. And as you can see, this term is order epsilon squared. And if you take partial derivative with respect to epsilon, that tells you a u v minus l v equals zero and that is your v statement so if you assume the m statement this is how you are going to get the v statement okay for any arbitrary v this must be true and this must also be true because del pi del epsilon at epsilon equals zero must go to zero You see, this epsilon equals zero is important. Otherwise, you also have uh, this term a v v times epsilon squared. Achha, by the way, for any symmetric bilinear form, a v v is always greater than zero for any arbitrary v, unless of course v is trivially zero. Like V is no function of X. It's like V is zero. That's the function. That's when A U V would be zero. Think about this integration. Or think about, so make U equals V and V equals V. Okay. The only way this integration becomes trivially zero is when V equals zero. If V is any other function, that is not going to be true. 
so if this quantity is uh, this quantity is greater than zero actually this is an unsigned quantity if you look carefully e is a positive quantity a is is a positive quantity no matter what v you take let's assign x it's basically cos x squared which is a positive quantity and you are integrating a positive quantity over certain limit you are going in you'd end up getting a positive quantity so here also you are supposed to get uh, this term right here twice epsilon Achha, by the way there is a half here so epsilon times uh, a v v but you are supposed to take this partial derivative at epsilon equals zero because once you take epsilon equals zero this this right here u tilde which is uh, u plus epsilon v that becomes uh, u at epsilon equals zero okay and uh, that's when this partial derivative should be zero because when uh, u tilde equals u for any arbitrary v is when pi tilde becomes pi the minima okay it doesn't matter what v do you take but it's when epsilon equals zero that minimization happens so that's why the partial derivative with respect to epsilon equals zero for any arbitrary v okay but then uh, this term right here this is linear in epsilon so this also vanishes okay so what do you end up getting you end up getting the v statement okay uh, from the m statement okay now that path we have already traveled while uh, getting the euler lagra equation or while doing the problem on bar uh, bar deflection we we have already encountered uh, this uh, transition from m statement to v statement now let us see how do we get how do we get v statement to m statement so let's start with v statement say v holds v statement holds which basically means for any arbitrary view u is such a function that this holds so by the way what is lv this entire thing is l of v this thing is linear in v so l is a linear function linear operator and a is a bilinear symmetric operator okay so this definite integral is uh, is is linear in v and so is this boundary condition okay so a u v equals l v that holds true for all v so in that situation we need to show that for whatever function this relation is true for any arbitrary v that function must minimize the so called potential whose expression we are about to write once again imagine pi tilde and this time i'm not using an epsilon because i don't need one okay if i do this okay where v is still the variation of u sorry sir this one is u plus v again so again this can be split into some of the things like uh, a u u plus uh, half 2 a u v where twos cancel out and then half uh, a v v remember this is greater than zero for all intents and purposes and there is a l of u minus a l of v so you have the following expression half a u u minus a l of u which we may want to call some sort of pi remember the what we are assuming to be true is the v statement the aim statement we are deriving it to be true okay so whatever these two expressions uh, club into we are simply calling that as pi and later you would show that uh, this pi tilde is always going to be greater than pi now what are the next two terms next two terms are uh, these two
AUV without the half and LV. But since we assume the V statement to be true, this we have already assumed to be assumed to be what? Uttar Bolta. Ami Jodi Bhatke JG class Nita Bari, Tomadero Jig class Kutta. Kyoki Shunchona. Yes, I shunchi. KK Acho Egbert Adamans Dauto? Sir Ami Bubai. Sir Ami Shornabo. Sir Schmidtchen. Juliami V statement take a true bullet Horini. Talaja bracketed Mudami Duto Tamke Club Kurlam. It a Shomborkami keyboard delivery. V statement is basically this minus this equals zero. Amaj bracketed mod the term to elo shadow key bold the body. If A U V equals L V, what I get to say about A U V minus L V? Zero. Areta Uttorbete Atakun Laglo. And then you have Half a V V. Now, if you think about it, pi tilde is pi plus some sort of half a V V. So the barred example in it, so it would be 0 to L E A V prime squared dx. None of these are negative quantities ever. They are definitely positive. This half a v v, which is basically this quantity in relation to bar problem. Of course, this one is a general expression. So this quantity is always greater than zero. Okay. So this being always greater than equal to zero. Can I say this one is always greater than equals pi? Yes, sir. Which in other words means pi is the minimum value of pi tilde or pi tilde at v equals 0, v is a trivial 0 function, not just at the boundary, is actually pi is the minimum value. Or in other words, this thing holds or the aim statement holds. The V statement is correct. Then we get that the aim statement is also correct. Okay. So that actually creates the trinity of the aim statement, V statement and the strong form and shows that uh, any of these is uh, equivalent to one another. But key to variational form is the arbitrariness of the variation. Okay. If we find elementary formulation, 
we would be doing that in variational form. Okay, because you know to do a numerical method, we need the weak form, and uh, our preferred uh, choice of very uh, weak form would be the variational form. And when we would be using variational form, uh, we would see that throughout the derivation, we would use the concept of variation. Throughout the derivation, we would use the concept of variation, but we would never actually be trying to evaluate the variation because variation is arbitrary. And variation is not the solution that you are looking for. We are trying to solve for you. But the concept of variation is important in finite element method. Achha. Uh, uh, to holo. Arki bola chilo. Mm. Okay. Ibar amra ajkeer Shesh porjay chole eschi and where we would look into another example. Again, this example is very familiar to us mechanical engineers. How many of you recall this expression? Sir, it is a deflection. Yes, sir. Car. Deflection. Car. Car. Beam, beam. Beam. Say it on a column, I can tell you, sir. Column or beam is differential equation. Column is a user who buckling a problem on the solve pool. Column basically is supposed to take axial load. Okay. But when we are considering buckling, which is essentially bending, but but while the member is vertical, that's why uh, you get this equation. Basically, this thing, rather the form that I'm about to write is called Euler Bernoulli beam equation. It is kind of irritating that how often this person's name arises in your uh, whatever mathematical subject that you choose. Okay, uh, and there is a there is a saying that uh, if you do not name any equation or uh, any number in mathematics uh, after the second scientist or second mathematician who independently discovered that equation or that number then it would be so much confusion in mathematics because then many equations would be Euler equations and many numbers would be Euler numbers. So that's why it is important to include uh, the name of the second scientist who independently worked on that particular equation. Hence Barnard. So the euler Barnoli equation, first of all, in finite element method, we use you'd lose some sort of syntax that we have been made familiar to uh, while studying strength of materials from Timoshenko. Uh, we would uh, then take a couple of derivatives, and this is the differential equation that we are willing to work with. What is Q of X? Q of X is uh, that uh, W of X. This thing right here. Earlier we used to write them, uh, write it as W of X. Now, in our formulation, we would write it like Q of X. It's distributed load. It is force per uh, unit length, of course. But this thing is lateral. Unlike the beam problem, bar problem, this one is lateral. Okay, so the differences you might notice from uh, this equation right here. Okay, number one is, uh, achha, by the way, this one is uh, U prime, whole prime. Okay, this one is a second order OD, this one is a fourth order OD. And assuming the Young's modulus and the moment of inertia are uh, 
are constants acha hold on a second
okay um, so if we compare these two equations uh, one is a, a second order differential equation both are ODEs and this one is a fourth order differential equation apart from that they look very similar and uh, if you also point out the boundary conditions uh, for bar this is what the boundary conditions that we went with so so u at 0 was at was 0 and e a u prime at uh, l was p uh, so for uh, beam equation imagine you are working with a cantilever beam it would matter what sort of uh, support that the beam has because that essentially is the boundary condition so what you can see is w0 is 0 and w prime 0 equals 0 and uh, And this is our arbitrary distributed load, not at all UDL. So, so what what do we get here? Uh, achha, by the way, by the way, the correct direction, correct direction for the force should be upwards. If it is downwards, we would be using negative sign. So we are not using the standard beam uh, sign convention. We are sticking to the global Cartesian form. So whatever is upward is positive y. That's what we are taking. So this is Q of x. I don't know how you are getting that upward force. Maybe maybe uh, some sort of forces that were uh, mm, someone is pushing it from below but this is an arbitrary q and that q can also take the form of this one right here so it is partially loaded okay which basically means there is some sort of q here but that q is zero and in addition to that you can have some sort of traction boundary conditions as well so this one is gamma u you see the first derivative here is also uh, also in gamma u. Okay, so the boundary condition on first derivative is also considered to be considered to be a boundary condition on one of the primary variables. Okay, so the first uh, so the zero, I mean the quantity on itself and its first derivative both are variables to solve for. Whereas the boundary conditions over here uh, could be that there is a point load P being applied over here and also a counterclockwise moment. So whatever is positive in relation to your right-handed system. So, you know, you have, you'll have to forget some of the conventions that you used with the uh, strength of materials. Uh, the convention here is pretty straightforward. It is with the uh, the Cartesian system, whatever is positive, and it is with right-handed system, whatever is positive. So this M and P are the boundary conditions at the so-called free end. Okay, so this one is the so-called fixed end. And these are the free ends. This, this one is the free end. And uh, this P and M uh, could very well be zero, and this will still be the free end. Okay, and this is uh, these are still going to be the gamma t or the traction boundary condition. So traction is essentially supposed to be your uh, any form of force boundary condition. So it could be concentrated force, concentrated moment, distributed force. Of course, since you are working with a one-dimensional object. The boundary is a point, so you can either have a concentrated force or a concentrated moment. This Q right here is not some sort of traction boundary condition. This Q would be referred to as something you would learn about in later classes, something called a body force, which acts everywhere within the geometry. You see, the idea is if you are working with a volume, the surface area is the boundary. 
if you are working with a surface then the curve that uh, bounds it the closed curve that bounds it is the surface but if you are working with uh, a linear geometry not necessarily straight line then the boundary is a couple of points the end points and uh, and the line itself is the body okay so whatever is acting everywhere within the body is called a body force and that's what we have here this distributed load right here and also uh, this q right here in the bar problem both are body loads or body forces okay ये अब दी बोल रहे थे तो हाँ सर हाँ सर तुम्हारे कार्टर क्लास है जी को एक क्लस्टर पड़े हमारे नहीं सर हमारे क्लास ओके सो आई माइट टेक टेन मिनट्स एक्स्ट्रा ओके ओके सर अनफॉर्च्युनेटली आई हैड वन फोन कॉल टू अटेंड सो ओके so this is the differential equation we are working with and if we are looking at this particular example cantilever beam later on we would we can extend this to simply supported beam and what not but if we do extend this one to the cantilever beam then these are the boundary conditions so in gamma u which is uh, at x equal 0 w0 equal 0 w prime 0 equal 0 and if we assume v to be arbitrary variation of w then we must satisfy the essential boundary condition which means if value of w is given don't have to be zero but if it is given then the variation must also be zero in gamma u what about in gamma t there is a reason the gamma t is called a free end because there is no compulsion on the variation on what value it must take at gamma t the compulsion is only at the gamma u and for the rest of the geometry v is arbitrary so in gamma t which is basically x equals l uh, you have this boundary condition e i w double prime equals m and e i w triple prime equals p these are the boundary conditions okay so next we can write the variational form what we showed earlier that there is a, an m statement and then there is a v statement okay of course there would be a strong form or differential equation otherwise how do you pose a problem but they're not always going to be an aim statement although our learning in this course only started with an aim statement we wanted to minimize the time in the bracket stockholm problem but that that sort of uh, relationship would not always be there the aim statement might always not be there. For example, uh, if you are not talking about a conservative system, you see, even in the bracket stockholm problem, what did we do? We wanted to minimize the time, but uh, we chose frictionless shoot, which what basically meant was that the mechanical energy was conserved. So if you don't have a conservative system, you don't have a potential to uh minimize okay uh so could there be any other functional that could be minimized that's a different thing but going from variational form to aim statement 
would not be possibly that straightforward. Okay. Whereas the variational form might exist uh, even when the differential equations are non-linear. Here we are dealing with all linear equations for which in our undergrad we did closed form solutions. Again, in my defense, we are only doing the benchmarking. Uh, so, uh, but if you are dealing with non-linear differential equations, okay, if you are dealing with, uh, let's say, not even order differential equation, so this one is a second order ODE and this one is a fourth order ODE. And what did we do with the second order ODE? We got a potential energy statement which should look something like this. Which incorporated a symmetric bilinear form which would uh, so minimize with respect to u half integration e a u prime squared dx and then so on and so forth. But this form right here, okay, this symmetric form where u prime times u prime, you can only get using integration by parts, of course, you can only get when you are dealing with an even order of derivatives in the partial differential equation. Sorry, in, in your governing differential equation. If the governing differential equation had three derivatives, you are not going to get the symmetric form and that would not be some sort of potential energy that you can minimize. Okay. To give you a vague uh, analogy, you see uh, in, a, in a one degree of freedom system, okay, this one is conservative. Okay, this one is a conservative system. Uh, but if you add an odd order of derivative, not so conservative anymore. I hope you realize what I'm talking about. You're talking about dissipation, okay, through damping. So similarly, if you have uh, an odd order of derivative in the differential equation, you probably would not be able to distribute that into two parts. Of course, you cannot do that. So you don't have that potential energy statement. But this, the weak form, uh, in terms of the variational form, you can always get. Okay. Mm. So that's what we are trying to do here. Uh, mm. So that's that's what we would follow. You'd you know simply stick to the variational statement as the weak form, and let's say uh, this is our strong form along with the boundary conditions. And what we are doing now, we are multiplying this whole thing but we would also incorporate the boundary conditions This equals zero. Achha, what I forgot to multiply uh, to this, I'm supposed to multiply W and to this, I'm supposed to multiply W prime. Okay. Now you might notice that here and here the expressions have changed. Okay. The order of positive and negative has changed. Okay. Uh, that I got from some sort of intuitions because I have uh, done this derivation for let's say the 15th time. So I know that is how it is going to turn out to be.
but after we have done this uh, derivation okay i'll also tell you that how to avoid any confusion acha and this is true for any arbitrary acha sorry sorry it's not w that should be multiplied you should multiply v and v prime over here so v and v prime okay this is true for all v and that's when these two are equivalent the strong form and the weak form are equivalent okay the arbitrariness of v satisfying um, in gamma v sorry in gamma u such and such would happen okay now since this one is a fourth order differential equation the integration by parts needs to be done thrice okay or rather twice the integration by parts needs to be done twice so that these two derivatives okay goes from w to v that's what we did in bar so there was say two derivatives on u one of them we brought to w, uh, to v so here w has fourth order derivative we want to make w double prime times v double prime okay so i'm just proceeding from here and nothing wrong in this statement if this is trivially zero everywhere for x 0 to l and see this time i'm writing less than equal to l okay because i cannot write about this equation to be true at x equal 0 because at x equal 0 this one is fixed okay but i can write it to be less than equals l acha uh, and then since this is trivially zero everywhere from 0 to l so this integration must be zero number one number two is uh, since this one is zero at the boundary so if you also multiplied v at x equal l or v prime at x equal l that also doesn't change anything these are all zero so no wrong in this statement uh, what makes it more correct or rather equivalent so uh, this is a direct corollary for a, any given v but if i say this is true for all v then they are basically equivalent of one another that means if i make it arbitrary uh, true for arbitrary v then i can also go from the second line to the first line saying that this is true and i can also get all the boundary conditions acha so the next thing is uh, that uh, we integrate by parts so the first so i we keep integration 0 to l q v dx as it is okay is just that this term right here with derivatives is that we integrate by parts so the first term should be e i w double prime whole prime okay times uh, v evaluated at 0 to l plus then 0 to l e i w double prime whole prime times v prime dx okay and this term right here it is a uh, v l times p minus e i w double prime whole prime so i'm writing about this term right here times v this whole thing evaluated at l now here is the usefulness of my uh, intuition that i chose the signs correctly you know to be able to cancel these two the next term that we have is uh, ei w double prime times uh, v evaluated at l minus m times v at l this whole thing goes to zero but then again if i integrate this term again by parts acha sorry this should come with a negative sign right so the next term would be e i w double prime times v prime evaluated at x equal 0 and x equal l by the way i only get to cancel this whole thing evaluated at x equal l 
why did i cancel this whole thing at x equal 0 ei w double prime whole prime times v that expression evaluated at l cancels out from these two terms okay but what about ei w double prime whole prime times v evaluated at x equal 0 why do i get to make that term equal to 0 তোমরা কি চালিয়ে দিয়ে অন্য কোন কাজ করছো মানে নাকি আমার কথাটা বোঝা যাচ্ছে না স্যার আমরা শুনছি ওকে তাহলে এটা কি বোঝা যাচ্ছে কেন সো দিস অ্যাকচুয়ালি আর টু টার্মস রাইট ই আই ডব্লিউ ডাবল প্রাইম হোল প্রাইম টাইমস ভি ইভ্যালুয়েটেড এট এল দ্যাটস দা ওয়ান দ্যাট ক্যান্সেলস আউট বাট ই আই ডব্লিউ ডাবল প্রাইম হোল প্রাইম টাইমস ভি এক্স ইকুয়াল 0 ওয়াই ডাস দ্যাট অলসো ক্যান্সেল আউট ভগবান বিকজ এট এক্স ইকুয়াল জিরো ইউ হ্যাভ দ্য এসেন্সিয়াল বাউন্ডারি কন্ডিশন অ্যান্ড দ্য ভেরিয়েশন ইজ জিরো এট দ্যাট লোকেশন এবার বোঝা গেল এতক্ষণ বুঝতে পারো নি এটা এনিওয়েজ so i get to cancel both the terms now think about uh, what happens to the moment same thing at x equal 0 v prime is 0 so this whole thing goes to 0 but then at x equal l you have this term to cancel with and again that is the reason i chose i knew that uh, while taking integration by parts i'm going to encounter negative signs and that's why i chose different signs for p and m or ei w triple prime and ei w double prime so that's how you also get to cancel these two terms okay remember only the boundary condition at l cancels out and at x equal 0 this whole thing goes to 0 because v prime is 0 okay so with all the cancellations let's see what are the terms that we have so we have integration 0 to l acha okay ha uh-huh. so this is one term then another the term is 0 to l ei w double prime v double prime dx so this is our symmetric bilinear term dx which equals to 0 to l q v dx minus p times v at l plus m times v at l sorry m times v prime at l okay so <clears throat> this is our variational statement and that variational statement is true for all v okay now i am not sure how far 
you are comfortable with all of this idea but i am going to give you an assignment get the variational form for a simply supported beam with well i cannot apply concentrated force at the two boundaries because uh, i cannot put dirichlet and uh, neumann boundary condition at the same location i cannot do that but i can put moment boundary conditions because this is not gamma u for w prime no that's why i can put boundary conditions on uh, w double prime wrong sign okay and of course there is your arbitrary distributed load and as you might have already figured out from the cantilever to the simply supported beam the boundary conditions change okay but what doesn't change is your differential equation governing differential equation doesn't change or in other words okay so so i need you to get get the variational form or the v statement for the simply supported beam so we did that for the cantilever beam and get it for the simply supported beam and i know some of your worst habits that you simply want to look at the final expression and want to tweak that with the boundary conditions but i would suggest go through the entire derivation okay acha one more thing go through the derivation the way we did for the cantilever beam and that way you build your confidence and only by doing on your own that you build any understanding of the subject okay haki baji achei amader problem and mostly in things that we lack confidence so that doesn't mean you simply plug into this uh, variational form those boundary conditions no not allowed so start from the scratch multiply this thing with v and multiply whatever boundary condition is there with v and then continue okay mm, one more thing so so i took while writing the variational form from the strong form i did this i multiplied uh, ei w double prime whole prime whole double prime minus q of x and integrated from 0 to l dx and then i also added the boundary conditions okay uh, somewhat like this uh, ei sorry p minus ei w double prime whole prime evaluated at x equal a and so on but if i do not do that if i do not remember the trick which one should be positive and which one should be negative i could also write simply this this equals zero right because this whole thing equals zero and no matter what v do i take for any arbitrary v this should also go to zero but then what else can i write i can integrate by parts so the first term would be ei w double prime 
single prime because this is the one that I'm integrating times V zero L minus and I'm skipping one step here and doing the second set of integration by parts, which would be E I W double prime times V V prime evaluated at zero and L then plus zero to L E I W double prime V double prime DX minus zero to L Q of X DX equals zero. Now, of course, uh, if we take the example of the cantilever beam at X equals zero, V equals zero and V prime equals zero. But then what about the values at X equal L at X equal L E I W double prime whole prime is simply P. So this whole thing with involving two terms of which one is zero simply because V is zero is essentially P times V L. And similarly, this one is M times V prime L. Okay, so all the manipulation that we did involving this and this could be readily done simply by substitution of the values from the boundary condition. Okay, and that also is okay. If you are willing to work like that, that is also fine. If you don't want to do this, that is also fine. Okay, so here we have done the entire derivative for uh, a cantilever beam, but you are supposed to do it for simply supported. Okay, and uh, get it done. And uh, what you can do is you can submit in the classroom. Sir, hello. Bolchi sir, the assignment a kora daage ekta sir doubt clearing a class deven. Kuch bhalo hai taol. Ki bishoy doubt bolo? Mane amader e previous jato gulo classes hoye chhe. To shetar bepar amra je jinish gulo bujhi chhi tate kichu bichu jinish er bepar ekto doubt sachhe. तो सर माने आज की बोलो आज की बोलो आह सर आज की माने पूरे बैपर टकी बोलो तो सर आपनी जरम भावे अर्की जिन्हें जो लागे कोडी है चल हमारे वीडियो वाइज देखते रहते जाते थे बस सर शॉप कोटा प्रीवियस वीडियो अखनो कंप्लीट होय नहीं तो बस जारू फले सर जो दी आपनी आरेक्ट डेट दी थे न तले खूब on Wednesday, uh, we can have the initial discussion. When I'm not putting another class to complete Korean over J to who target that for a maybe we can discuss for half an hour. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, tell me recording to one the good. Okay, sir.